plenty of intimidating things you'll run into out there on the water, but nothing as intimidating as the old ghost boat rolling around without anybody on board. Now you may be asking yourself, BG, how does this one happen? Well, typically it happens when somebody's doing something on the vessel, and they wind up falling overboard without having the safety kill switch lanyard attached to their person, which in most cases nowadays is actually illegal depending on the size of your vessel. Certain vessels you absolutely must wear this, but if your boat's equipped with one, you might as well go ahead and put it on. To help you avoid finding yourself in a situation like this, right here a jet ski actually tracked this boat down, and they transferred somebody over from the jet ski onto the vessel and they were able to get the boat stopped. But today, now that spring's upon us, we're gonna go ahead and go through some of those reminders, some of those tips, tricks, and things you need to look out for out there on the water so you can go ahead and get your spring and your new boating season for 2024 started off in the right way. Welcome back, crew, to this episode of Boneheaded Boaters of the Week. So tip number one we're gonna talk about today is one of the golden rules out there on the water, and that's reminding yourself to never approach anything any faster than you're willing to hit it. The reality is if you're coming in a little bit too hot, the likelihood of you hitting something at a much higher rate of speed than you're willing to do so is significantly increased. So whatever you do, make sure you take your time, especially around the docks in areas where slow speed maneuvers are required. And speaking of taking your time, that's gonna take us to step number two. It's really easy to get super excited about that first time getting back out there on the water. And one of the places we find people will rush quite frequently, that's going to be around the boat ramp because the excitement at that point is at its peak. So so this is just your friendly reminder that when you're heading down to the boat ramp, take your time, make sure everything looks right, you've got the proper equipment, and you're doing everything the correct way. Many people have what they call a boating checklist that they'll use when they get down to the boat ramp to make sure they remember all the important things they have to do when they're down there, such as making sure your boat's loaded, fueled up, that you have the proper equipment on your vessel, and of course that you're making sure to put that drain plug in before you get it out. And of course, another thing you're gonna to wanna to check is going to be your actual tow vehicle. Make sure you've got good tires and proper equipment on your tow vehicle and make sure you have the proper tow vehicle. Maybe you upgraded that boat over the off season and all of a sudden the vehicle you have now to tow your vessel is no longer quite up to the job. And I do feel like this is one of the most asked questions on the internet. I'm buying a new boat and I've got a Honda Odyssey minivan that's rated to tow at 5,000 pounds. The new boat weighs 6,000 pounds. I can tow it, right? My boat ramp's only a half mile away and it's all flat land but as you can see in these images here if you don't have the proper vehicle things can still go wrong even in flat areas so just make sure that if you are towing for your safety and everybody else's you have the correct vehicle Another reminder I'm gonna give you, it's been a long off season for many of us and many of us haven't touched boats in months. And if you're that person who hasn't touched your boat in quite some time, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and start slow. Don't go rushing back into boating and put yourself in a tight spot. Your skills probably aren't exactly where they were when you put that boat away last fall. So go ahead and get out there on your vessel, maybe do it on a slow weekday. Do it in a wide open area and go back through and just kind of hone your skills back in on boating before you go out there and try and do something a little bit over your head. Unfortunately, boating is not like riding a bicycle where you're just going to hop right back on and everything's going to be okay. It does take a little time to get yourself back acclimated to being in boat life. A great example, a good friend of mine who's been boating for 30 years just called me the other day, said he took his boat down to the boat ramp, tried starting it for 10 minutes and it wouldn't start. They pulled the boat back out of the water only to realize the reason it wouldn't start is they didn't have the safety kill switch line you plug back in. And the next thing you're going to want to do is double check all your equipment before you go anywhere. The last thing you want to do is get Get down there to the water or get out on the water and find out something's wrong. Boys, I just about got killed a second ago. I don't know whose truck this is. Just because everything was working and functioning properly when you put the boat away last fall doesn't mean it's going to be now. I landed on the back of that truck. My damn gas pedal got stuck wide ass open when I went to pull it up on the uh, truck. I drove completely over the top of my truck. Again, so always double check your equipment before you get out there to try and avoid any incidents from occurring. Thanks for watching, crew. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boneheaded Boaters of the Week. If you ever see anything crazy happening out on your waterways, be sure to hit us up on Facebook or Instagram and let us know, and you might see your stories over here. Just like Loco Sport Jet, Shifting Gears, South Florida Waterman, 
Tampa Bay Fishing Club, and Mike Edwards 640 did this week. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here.